Today's sponsor is BT Miners. BT Miners has been a longtime sponsor of the channel and a proven reliable source for ASIC miners. If you are looking to purchase ASICs hardware from Bitcoin to Dogecoin miners, they are available for purchase on bt-miners.com. BT Miners has recently launched an app on iOS and Android that lets you browse their inventory by profitability and return on investment. Follow the affiliate link in the description and use promo code SOAT for a discount. Let's go ahead and talk about Ledger. There was an exploit that endangered DeFi and that basically a warning to not interact with any decentralized apps with your Ledger. The exploit reportedly prompts users to connect their wallets via a pop-up triggering a token drainer. Now, Here's the thing about this particular exploit that everyone should be aware of. This is an exploit that can be across any DAP enabled wallet. So if you got a web wallet, right, that sort of thing, like MetaMask, these exploits have been quite common across the board. So it's not just limited, I think, to Ledger in this particular case. But let's go ahead and get the details. Sushi's chief technology officer warned of an industry-wide exploit related to a Ledger's Connect kit as the decentralized finance protocol was hit by a front-end exploit. Ledger, a maker of hardware wallets, provides Connect kit software that decentralized finance protocols such as Lido, MetaMask, and Coinbase, along with Sushi, used to connect decentralized apps to its products. By comprising the front end of a website or application, hackers can alter functions users see and con them into inadvertently sending cash to the exploiters rather, rather than to their own wallets. Do not interact with any dApps until further notice, said Sushi CTO Matthew Lilly on X. It appears that a commonly used Web3 connector has been compromised, which allows for injection to malicious code affecting numerous dApps. The exploit reportedly prompts users to connect their wallets via a pop-up, which then triggers the token drainer. Issues have also been reported across other DeFi websites, including Zapper and Revoke Cash. Five hours after the hack, Ledger published a postmortem on X. It confirmed that a former Ledger employee fell victim to a phishing attack, which allowed a hacker to insert malicious code into Ledger's Connect kit. It adds that the code has now been removed and stablecoin issuer Tether has frozen the hacker's wallet. We've identified a critical issue in the ledger connector that has been compromised, potentially allowing the injection of malicious code affecting various dApps, Sushi wrote in a statement. If you have a Sushi page open and see an unexpected connect wallet pop up, do not interact or connect your wallet. One X user pointed out that Ledger's library had been compromised and replaced with a token drainer. Ledger said it had identified and removed a malicious version of the Ledger Connect kit. A genuine version is being pushed to replace the malicious file now, Ledger said. Do not interact with any dApps for the moment. And of course, this has been resolved now. They've come out and said that it is. But this does bring up a few points, I think, across the entire board that I find interesting. One is, of course, the ability for Tether to lock down the hacker's wallet. And uh, no, 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 that's no fun because that's a centralization issue. That means that they can lock it down if they disagree with you as well. So, you know, a lot of people want to utilize stable coins to protect investments or like basically profits and that sort of thing. I kind of get it, but I think you should go ahead and pull out to US dollar completely if you are working uh, in that realm. Of course, trading between platforms and so on, I kind of get it. A lot of this is, I think in general, right? We talk about the steps of wallets and it's important to understand like the flow and security when you're participating in cryptocurrency. And, and I'll give you a, give you kind of my, my take on it and what I practice, right? I have basically my cold wallets and those are seed phrases that are generated on an offline computer that are then stored offline completely and that is where i put a majority of my holdings that i don't want to participate in any networks with 
And then I have what is a warm wallet. And that wallet is going to be something that does basically connect to something that basically will bring me online, but doesn't stay on online all the time. And you can utilize hardware wallets for this, but I have been moving away from hardware wallets completely. What I prefer to do is basically have some sort of Cubes OS installed as the easiest one, for example, which is an, a Linux distribution uh, that I have done videos on on how to utilize and they bring up basically individual containers uh, of VMs that keep them all separated in case you get a wallet with malicious uh, software malicious code or something on it keep them all separated and that way I can open up each individual wallet on that particular on that particular device send out the cryptocurrency where i need to and then shut it down and then i have my hot wallets right they're going to be like the things where i have my metamask connected to my web wallet my you know nautilus my alethium web wallets those those types of things and those ones in particular are utilized for any daily trading type uh, connectivity and so on. And then the last step is any centralized exchange like a crypto.com or a Coinbase or a Zegex or whatever that may be. And the amount of cryptocurrency held in all of those decreases as it goes up. So you're filtering all the way through. And that's going to filter out basically the the capability of being vulnerable and the amount of your cryptocurrency that will be vulnerable all the way down. And this is what I highly recommend. I also like one of the big things that I think a lot of people miss too for them from the miners perspective is keep your mining wallet as like basically a warm wallet. Right. And what I would recommend doing is is mining to that warm wallet. And then booting up every once in a while, taking that warm wallet and sending it to basically a paper wallet. And what that's going to do is keep your, try to keep as much obfuscated off of like the public network as possible. Because if you have that mining wallet, you know, on a pool and such, those pools are going to be able to see that wallet if you get targeted, because let's say you're a large mining whale in a in some random shit coin and somebody decides to start pressing you at least you get a little bit more obfuscation off of that so these are kind of the the steps i would take surrounding it also you really can't trust a lot of these hardware wallet companies anymore and the other downside to them is that they're integrating so many different cryptocurrencies the, I, I, and I get this, I get the idea, like for convenience, everybody wants all of their crypto in one location, you know, utilize Ledger. When do you have Ledger support? When do you have Trezor support? When do you have, you know, whatever hardware wallet you're utilizing? The thing is, is like the more integration you have with these, the more vulnerabilities you're going to pick up because of all of the integrations into a single wallet. So I technically like from my perspective, the more adoption or not adoption, but the more cryptocurrencies that are supported by a single hardware wallet, the more compromised or uh, the more capable it is to be compromised in my humble opinion. So I don't really, I'm moving away from hardware wallets completely. I'm not a big fan of them. Plus they can push malicious software through your connect if they wish and all of that sort of thing. I also don't like things like the Zellcore wallet, right? I don't like the idea of everything being all in one wallet. It's just going to put you in a position where if that single thing is compromised, well, you're screwed. Whereas if you're spinning up individual wallets, preferably command line wallets, one wire command line wallets, you know, they're going to be harder to access in general for a majority of the population. Two, they're going to be completely containerized from the rest of your wallets if you're doing it properly through virtual machines, etc. So if there's a, you know, some sort of rug pull from a particular network or they push malicious software in a node update, that's not necessarily connected to the rest of your wallets and they, they won't be able to get those. So, you know, you're just reducing your risk more and more and more the more you separate out each wallet. I know it can be a lot of work, but I have never said that this is passive income. And I think anybody that says that is full of <laughs> So don't do it. Don't believe it. You got to be active here because this is the web. 
you know, there it's very tough to stay secure. Hacks are going to happen all the time. You need to be on your toes. So that's kind of my my two cents about it. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the live chat as well as the comment section below. Now, you guys mind during the bear market. You made it through. Well, at least maybe a half of you. I know a lot of you motherfuckers over here didn't actually do it, but the ones that did, I have a new shirt for you guys. And it says, I mind with the bears for the bear market. Okay. So if you mind with the bears and you want to rep that you did mine during the bear market, go ahead and head on over to shop.sonofatech.com and the listing will be down below. I'll put it in live chat right now. I have a sweatshirt. There's a sticker. If you'd rather have a sticker, t-shirt, premium shirt, all that cool, cool stuff. Um, really like the new shirt. I ordered a few for myself and I just had that design finished this week. Eventually it'll be under on the YouTube channel, but that takes a little bit of time. So just give it some time. Uh, proceeds of course go to supporting me in the channel. So there you go. And I thought, uh, we put some work into it and I thought you guys might enjoy it. Thanks for watching this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here and don't forget to subscribe down here as well. You can also check out my crypto mining e-course at sonofatech.com where you can get a free month of supporter status with a purchase at sonofatech.locals.com. Also, don't forget to check out my merch underneath the video or at shop.sonofatech.com. I'll see you next Tuesday.